This is the Outer Hebrides off the west coast of Scotland. And this is the Great Wall of China, but it's not my first destination. The scenery here is spectacular, but it's not the only thing that makes this place special. For over a century, these isles have been home to the world-famous fabric of Harris Tweed. I'll discover how it's made. In southwestern China, the Bai people have been tie-dyeing their clothes for generations. We travel to Dali, the ancestral home of Bai people. Tie-dyeing is like giving birth. You never know what your baby will look like when it's in your belly. Hello and welcome to Crossing Cultures, a program that is dedicated to exploring Eastern and Western cultural traditions. Scotland's Outer Hebrides lie on the edge of northwestern Europe. This incredible landscape inspires the colours that are woven into the famous fabric that's made here. Harris Tweed Hebrides is one of three mills on the island. Callum is showing me around. So, Callum, this is your mill, yep. and uh, this is the wool. Yep, so this is the first stage in the Harris Tweed process. Yeah. It's 100% pure virgin wool. That's all we can use in Harris Tweed. We can't use any foreign fibres other than 100% wool. Should we have a look around? Yep, let's go. The mill produces over 50 base colours. Once dyed, these are combined to make infinite blends. The wool is then carded and spun into yarn. Protected by Parliament, the rules governing Harris Tweed are strict. The cloth must be woven by hand by the people of the Outer Hebrides. Derek is one of the island's many weavers. Hello, Derek. Hello there. So, how long does this take to master? Can anybody do it? Well, after a number of months, I'm sure most people can do it. But well, can you just get on and pedal? Yes. Can I have a go? Yes. Hey. Just don't pedal backwards. And don't pedal backwards. Why? What happens if I pedal backwards? Things go wrong. <laughs> OK. All right. So let's have a go. And don't go too fast. That's it. OK. The complexity of the pattern is absolutely beautiful. It's incredible. Yep. And how long would it take to produce a piece of cloth like this? This length here, it would take about three, four hours pedaling. OK. To do it. Non-stop? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Why don't you use an electric loom? Because it's not allowed. Not allowed? No, not allowed to be used in Harris Tweed. But is that kind of what makes it so special? Oh, yeah, that it's done by hand. But... My legs are getting tired. This is, this is you must have... You must have great pair it's of easy, It's easy to no, pedal. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Derek, thank you. You're welcome. Once woven, the fabric is brought back to the mill for cleaning and pressing. Today we would have had a, probably about 40 tweeds returned from weaving. Wow. And you've got a few different patterns here that are all sewn together and running through the machine continuously. Now it's ready for the final stage. So this is where it gets certified, Callum. Yeah, so this is the final stage in the process. Yeah. Once a tweed has been woven, we take it back into the mill for final finishing before presenting it to the Harris Tweed Authority, who will authenticate it with the famous Orb logo. And it must have that stamp. Yeah, it must have that stamp to be recognised as Harris Tweed. Now, from one famous fabric here in Scotland to another ancient art form in China, Eagle has more. This is Zhou Cheng. This village is situated close to the city of Dali. And the first thing that I've noticed here is that it seems like everyone is involved in tie-dyeing. Why? Let's learn the story together. Tie-dyeing is one of three traditional printing techniques with their origins in ancient China. It combines a number of different skills to produce beautiful patterns. Zhou Cheng in Dali is popularly called the hometown of Bai Tai Dying. Hi there. On our way here, we saw a lot of this plant in the yards. Yes. What is it you're picking? Woad root. Oh, woad root. Yes, we use it for dyeing. Woad root is thought to have great medical value among Chinese people. It's the basis of the most popular cold medicine here. So it came as a surprise to discover that the Bai people extract a pigment from it for dyeing. The Bai people have a unique approach to tie dyeing. It involves eight steps, of which, obviously, the tying and the dyeing are the most important. 
Duan Yingkai was born into a Bai Tai Dai family. In tie dyeing, making the dye is the first creative step, followed by the tying, which is the second. You must keep the stitches even. So, like what I understood is, it has to be really, really tight. But when you do it tight, what I realized that you're gonna block other places, other spaces that you have to work with. So you're like contradicting yourself. The designs in the Bai people tie dyes represent what they see in nature. Every line tells a story about the environment surrounding them. Now this is the most exciting moment. So we're about to dye it, and I am dying to see it. Okay, it's right there. Oh! It's green at first. It turns blue gradually as it oxidizes in the air. It's got like a chemical reaction and becomes blue. When you look at it, it's green inside, but on the top layer, because it's contacting the air, the oxygen, it's turning blue. I'll give it a good stir for you. And you can't really tell, but the smell is so strong. It's so plenty. You see, the crumpled places haven't oxidized yet, have they? Uh -huh. That's just about enough dye. Let's wash it. So she said, the very important part is you have to uh, dip it into the water with power. Because she said when you do it, then the pain will come out. That's about right. That's it? Pretty good. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Let's unfold it and see. Just one? All right, just one. This is the most important moment. When you open it up, the knot that you had, it stays wide, right? And then you can see just so beautiful. But still, look, some of it is still green. And it's green because it has not contacted the oxygen yet. The last step is when you get to witness the miracle. You cut away the stitches and remove the threads from the entangled places to reveal the patterns that were hidden among the tight knots. But you need to be careful. A tiny slip, and you can make a hole that will ruin the whole piece. What I love the most about tie-dyeing is that you don't know what's coming. And as a result, the outcome is unpredictable. So you'll never get two patterns and colors that are exactly the same. Like any fine gent, I want to look the business, so I'm here in Edinburgh to check out the very best in Scottish style. Hello, David. Hi, Paul. Hiya. I'm here to try on some of your Harris Tweed jackets. You are indeed. What do you have Good for to me? Meet you. Good to meet you. Let's have a look. OK. So, we have our Harris jackets and the rest of our Harris here. So we've got jackets, we've got coats, waistcoats, more jackets here, and then we have our Harris Tweed trousers selection at the bottom there. So normally I'm a 42 regular. Cool. Well, let's have a look, see what we've got okay. on the rack for you. Oh, we're in luck. OK. We've got a 42 regular right here. Yeah, can yeah. I try it on? Oh, wow, look at that. Stand easy and do your top button up for me. Feels great. Be great. Nice and heavy, got that Harris weight, got yeah. the herringbone. You've got all that detail there. Yeah, all the colour that you've got in there. So how popular is Harris Tweed? Uh, incredible. So, I mean, it has worldwide appeal. Uh, people from all over, we get visitors from all over the world and everybody knows Harris Tweed. It's got that worldwide appeal and it's got that worldwide recognition. So you get a lot of international customers? We do, yeah. I'd say between 75 to 80 percent of our customers are from abroad, overseas. And uh, yeah, those guys are the heart of our business. And what do they expect? They expect things to kind of last. They know they're going to get a lifetime's wear out of it. They know there's the, the history and, you know, they want the fabric, they want the weight, they want the colour, they want everything, all the sort of natural thing that comes with Harris Tweed and the, the full kind of history of that brand. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm very tempted. So you should be. It's a great fit. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, a genuine Harris Tweed. That's it for this episode of Crossing Cultures. For now, it's goodbye from me here in Edinburgh. That's it for now. Please follow our program for more exciting stories. And this is a goodbye for me here in Beijing. Thank you.